business, your calling, your ministry, your church. The more the, the enemy is attacking, it just makes me to realize that I'm very important. Our perceptions are different. Someone when is being highly attacked, they begin to think they're not important. When more attacks come, I say, why is the devil so much strong on me like this? Then I begin to look for my colleagues in the Bible. I see all of them were going through the same things. But it did not end like that. Their end was victory. Nobody who was going through too much ended by too much. Oh yes. If you are in a beach, in a football beach, now can you imagine we have the ball on your feet? You will not see all the 21 players. The eyes are on the person. So you have all eyes. The whole stadium. They'll be looking at the one with the ball. Once you hit the ball and it goes on top of the bar, the whole stadium goes like, ah. Because the rest of other players are not important. So the reason why you are being marked. I am careful because the shot you are about to make, it has to score. Are you hearing me, somebody? Because your opponents are also watching as you are going with the ball towards the end. Your opponents are also what? Once you miss, they will clap hands. Once the goalkeeper saves your shot, they will be like, wow, our goalkeeper is so good. But once you score, that's it, the secret of knowing how important you are. It is when so many opponents come your way. Bring it on, Major! Major! Sage and pray. Now, the word watch, it means to descend to anacrino, to test figuratively by means of trying, discerning, having ability to know, having the knowledge. So he said, watch and pray. He never said pray and watch. He said, watch and pray. So we do have demons that actually are monitoring you. But if you don't watch over them, you'll be in trouble. So we have people who are praying, but they're not doing the watching. Now, this teaching I'm teaching you about the monitoring spirit, it will open your eyes so you can watch. You can know what's going on. So you can invert the satanic banks. You can invert satanic warehouses where they're keeping your miracle. And you can break and take what belongs to you. Today, we're going to deal with the demonic police. Some of you already know. They knew Jesus was there. They, they were monitoring Jesus so closely. They even penetrated the surrounding of Jesus. When he was praying at the mountain, one of his own apostles came to kiss him. It was not him kissing. It was a demon. The Bible says when Jesus was taking Holy Communion, when he gave Judas, the Bible said, and Satan entered him. So from that moment, it was not Judas. It was a monitoring spirit. And when the people who wanted to kill Jesus, wanted to kill Jesus, they had to find that spirit to say, we want you to be the one to show us who we must crucify. Who is Jesus? I thought the enemy can use them to monitor your life. Your own boss, your own cousin, your own sister. Moses was born. And before he was born, the demonic world had an intelligence that Moses was coming. They were monitoring his coming to a level whereby midwives were told that at this period, any baby boy must be killed. They knew he was coming. They were monitoring. This is why we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Yeah.
Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Greetings there, everybody. Welcome to our midweek service, the Jesus Nation uh, midweek service. And I want to welcome you wherever you're watching us from, whether you're watching us from your car or your house, or you're watching us at your workplace or wherever you may be right now welcome to everybody wherever you're watching us from and if you're joining us right now and you're in the conference room i just want you to wave your hands let me see everybody's hands right in the conference room just wave your hands right now wherever you are right in the conference room let me see their hands let me see their hands let me see everybody's hands right in the conference room i would like to just just wave your hands wave your hands if you're excited today because your life is about to change wave your hands wave your hands let me see your joy let me see your joy. Let me see your joy. Let me see your joy. Wow, that's so amazing. That's so, 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 so much amazing. And today we are going to be talking about the Jesus Nation. And today I'm going to really um, start things a little bit different than we have um, a few weeks ago or two weeks ago, the first week or the first Sunday. Of this month we started a topic called the right mindset and on Sunday this past Sunday we did what we call family deliverance but I just want to take a little bit of a step back and um, do something a little bit different and give you a little bit of an understanding of how we can walk into the Jesus nation covenants did you hear that how we can walk into the Jesus nation covenants now, first of all, I want everybody to understand that today we are going to be talking about conquering the negative mind. Turn to your neighbor and say, conquering the negative mind. I want everybody to understand, before I even start opening scriptures or anything, I want everybody to understand me right here. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the mindset, having a kingdom mindset or conquering the negative mindset. I know to some of you will be like, but man of God, you've preached about the mindset before. Yes, I have, but you have never heard it the way I'm about to preach it right now. So I want you to brace yourself, get seated, and get your Bible, get your notepad, as I'm just giving you a little bit of an introduction into the sermon of today. So I want everybody to understand, right now, if I ask some series of questions, most of the times when we are born and when we are growing up we are faced with different challenges and some of those challenges may not be because of us but they may be because of external factors now if i look at you right now right now you are living your life in a certain way but if i take you a little bit of a step back of from the time that you were born uh, and to the time that you were growing up you were faced with different in your mind for we can look at okay community you stay in what sort of community was it what were you are uh, surrounded by in that community and some of us may be in a community that had um, a lot of challenges so many people were sick in that community so many people did not have uh, finances in that community so many people had different things um, Debt in that community so many people there were so many fights in that community uh, so many um, extramarital affairs in that community all those certain things only in that community now if i take it to your family we can look at it like this in your family you may find that um, some people they had drove certain cars some people they drove or lived in some certain houses you know only in your family and certain people were sick to uh, or had these certain sicknesses now understand this, that your mind has already conceived all those things. Your mind serves as a memory. So in your memory card or in your mental memory, your memory remembers so many of these things. Your memory remembers the community that you grew up in. You may not remember it, but your mental um, capacity already has taken that in. 
And now you remember how your community was. You remember how a, a man used to treat a woman in that community. You remember how someone used to behave with their finances in that community. You remember the sicknesses that people faced in that community. You remember all sorts of things, even with your um, family. You remember all those things that used to take place in your family. Now, when one person grows up, you must understand that it takes a lot of things to effect change. And one of those things is changing of the mind. Until we can change your mindset, we will not be able to change your future. Because history has already conquered your mental capacity or your mindset. Because it has taken over your memory. Your memory card or your mental capacity memory has now been consumed by so much of your past that even if um, right now we talk about, okay, you'll be rich, you won't be sick, you won't do this, you live in a big house, all those certain things, you won't treat your wife like this. Those things, it's very hard for you to believe because already your memory has already compiled data live in your past because you have seen it which you have not seen that's why it has grown up in a community in an area where there are fancy things fancy houses fancy cars his um his parents were treating each other well if they were treating kids were treating each other well there was no theft there was none of there was no crime none of that was there that child is most likely to succeed more than someone who was born in a disadvantaged community simply because not because of their um, opportunities yes opportunities do come you may have opportunities but if you have a negative mindset those opportunities will not benefit you anything am i talking to somebody so i want everybody to understand me right here that today we are discussing some few things that have to do with your mindset so today we really need to reprogram um, your mind and delete all the past experiences all the past memories that you have of failure all the past memories that you have of misfortune because that is the only way you will taste favor that is the only way you will taste for to somebody so when you are growing up and you are in a community where a man mistreats a woman a man beats up a woman most likely you as a man you will more you will uh, definitely abuse your wife you will definitely abuse another woman simply because not because you want it but because you definitely have that memory inside of you so today so many people we want to succeed in certain things we want to get married. We want to do this. We want to do that. We want to do all these things. But when we check your memory card, which we check, your memory card remembers that no one in your family was married. Your memory card remembers that no one in your family drove an expensive car. We remember, your memory card remembers that everybody in your family, nobody started a business. That's why you may have a business as a document, but it's doing nothing simply because, and you are really comfortable with it, simply because in your mental capacity, no, your mental memory, nobody has done all those things. So today we really need to reprogram, we need to erase the past memory and replace it with a good memory. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Now the Bible says in Romans chapter open right there to the book of Romans chapter number 12. I hope we're all there. Romans chapter number 12 and I hope you're following me today. Are you there somebody? Let me see you in the conference room as we're opening our Bibles. Romans and chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. Oh praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we there somebody? Are we there? Are we there? Bible on the screen just because of time. Now we will read it in the King James Version together. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Now verse 2 is where we get the exciting part here. It says and be not to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable 
and perfect will of God. I'll read verse 2 again. Be not conformed to this world. In other translations, do not be conformed to the standards of this world, to the fashion of this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, what is perfect, will of God. Now, I want you to see this, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible is telling us, do not be conformed to the pattern, to the system of this world. That's why we are dealing with the different systems that this world has come. We are dealing with the system of Tyrosites, the Hivites, the Gashites, all the sites. We are dealing with all the systems that the enemy has put. Now the Bible says do not be conformed. Do not be conformed to the fashion, to the system, to the pattern of this world. So meaning the things that you saw, the things that you had gone through, it says do not be conformed to that pattern. Do not be conformed to that pattern. Do not be conformed to that system. I know when you were growing up, you remembered how a man used to be, uh, or how you should treat a woman as a man, or how as a woman you should be treated by a man. You think it's acceptable for you to abuse a woman. You think it's acceptable for a, a, a man to abuse you as a woman, simply because it may not be right, but simply grew up in that community, you grew up in that environment, to that pattern, to that system of the world where it says that is right. Now the Bible says do not be conformed. That is not the right way of things. It says, but the only way that you can come out of that way of thinking is by the renewing of your mind. So we need to understand that there's a renewal of mindset that changes patterns, that changes systems of this world. Hmm, you didn't get that. I feel like people are not getting this. Oh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Watch this. So understand, it says, do not be conformed to the patterns, to the systems of this world. I know in your family, the person with the most expensive may have maybe a, a, a Mazda. Maybe it may have been a, a Kia. It may have been a Toyota, whatever. But the Bible says, do not be conformed. I don't care even if they drove a Mercedes Benz. That is the most expensive kind of a... But it says, do not be conformed to that system, to that pattern. The greater God has a greater plan for your life. God has a greater plan for your business. You just need to be removed from the pattern of this world. According to this world, it is okay, especially because your mental memory has captured those things. It is okay for you to grow up knowing that you have a sickness. But God for you, the only way you believe that is because now you need to change your mindset. You need to erase that mental memory and that's what we're doing today. Every neg negative memory that is upon your life, that has been upon your business, upon anything, we are erasing it today in the name of Jesus. Any negative memory, that's what we're doing today. Because I've come to realize that so many of us, we have a moment of belief. We have a moment of belief. You know, whether it can be when, 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 when you are, are listening to people, people, self, you're listening to me right now. You have so much belief that you know you will make it. But the moment you go back home and you look at your environment, it becomes so hard to just believe that you will make it. But I'm here to tell you we need to change your mindset. We need to change your mindset. It says do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, to the system of this world. I know we live in this world, but the Bible says do not be conformed. Do not let this system, this pattern rule your life. The only way you can come out of it is by the renewal of your mind. Hmm. Is by the renewal of our minds. I want everybody to understand that 100% of battles are won in our mind. And I've always said that. 100% of battles are won in our mind. Until you have won the battle mentally, you will never win it physically. You will never win it financially. You will never win it in your health. You first need to win it mentally. 
I know so many times we are faced with so many things in our lives, so many things that have um, dominated our mental memory that it's so hard to believe exactly. That's why we need to win the mind. That's why in some of the battles, and I hope one day I will get a chance to preach to you, the different battles we fight. One of the battles that you fight in life is not a battle against an individual, but it's a battle of your mind. We fight the battle of the flesh. We also fight the, um, the battle of our mind. We also fight the bat uh, spiritual battle. So there are different battles that we fight. And I'll preach about it one day if the Lord gives me a chance to. But this one of the mindset is very important. Because you must understand, it is very hard for an individual like you and me for us to believe in things that we do not see. So believing in things that we do not see comes to now a mental memory or mental capacity. Where your mind is determines where you are going. Of your mind, the condition of your mind determines where you are going. I'll put it into sports. Now, uh, I have a degree in sports science. Now, when I was studying in school, they said to us that, it is very important for you to understand um, when it comes to any sport, we need to condition the athlete according to the sport he plays. Can condition a football player to become a rugby player and put him in a football pitch. He will not perform, not because he was not conditioned, but because he was conditioned in a wrong way. That is what is happening. Our minds have been conditioned for failure. Our minds have been conditioned for uh, negativity. Our minds have been conditioned for all these negative things to a level where now when positivity comes, we fail not because positivity is not there, but because the condition of our mind is negative. The condition of our mind is poverty. The condition of our mind is, is sickness. So I'm and teaching the mind in a right way, we won't reach that right place. Ah, you didn't get this. I feel like I'm preaching to myself today. I feel like I'm preaching to myself. So understand, they told us that now, you first need to identify the sport the person plays. All right? First question now, where are you going in life? Where you're going in life is the right condition that you must put your mind in. Condition your mind according to where you are going. You didn't get this. Condition your mind according to where you are going. Until your mind can become it, don't expect your body to become it. Don't expect your household to become it. To become it. Don't expect your finances to become it because your mind has not become it. Your health may stay in the same place simply because you have not become it. So when we are conditioning an athlete, we condition the athlete according to the sport he plays and also according to the position he plays. So we do not condition uh, a striker like the way we position, uh, uh, condition a, a midfielder. Because a midfielder, he's like the engine, he runs a lot. But yet a striker, he just needs to be, yes he must be fit, but he just needs to be able to be quick and to be clinical as well. So we don't condition a striker the way we condition a midfielder. We don't condition a midfielder the way we condition a goalkeeper or a defender. That's because they are in different places. So we cannot condition your mind success, yet the success you are looking for is success financially. We cannot condition your mind um, in, in terms of health, if yet you are not looking for um, health because you are already in health. So right now I want to really tackle your mind today because today I want to remove every negative memory that is in your mind. It may be with health. It may be with relationship. It may be with finances. It may be with rejection. It may be with negativity. But today, that's what I want to deal with. Do you allow me to deal with this? Can I deal with this in the name of Jesus? Oh, people, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hmm. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So we have different types of mindsets. 
Now, the first type of mindset we had is called the grasshopper mindset. The grasshopper mindset. The reason why so many people fail or fail to enter into the Jesus Nation Covenant is simply because they have the grasshopper mindset. Turn to your neighbor and say the grasshopper mindset. Come on, turn to your neighbor and I see you. Turn to your neighbor. Even if you're sitting alone, just say the grasshopper mindset. Say it again. Say the grasshopper mindset. Say it again, the grasshopper mindset. Now, I want you to understand the first type of mindset we're dealing with is the grasshopper mindset. As I said to you earlier, that no matter how powerful God is, he is powerless in a negative mind. Now, when we open our Bibles to the book of Numbers, Numbers, let's go to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter number 13 and verse number 30. Numbers chapter number 13 and verse number 30. The book of Numbers chapter 13 and verse number 30. The Bible says something. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land though which we have gone up to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature and there we saw giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers so were in their sight hmm are we following or we are being followed I want you to see this. This is now a story where they reached a certain place in um, time. And now God told them and said, go and possess it. And now they began to complain and said, no, they are much stronger than us. This grasshopper mentality, this is a mentality where you see other people or you belittle yourself. You look down upon yourself. You feel sorry for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing our father said when he said, this is the year of the Jesus nation, we are going to take over. He said, the first thing he said, we are going to take over. You must understand that statement saying, we are going to take over. There is already an existing king. There is an already an existing business which is on top. There is already an existing person who is doing much better than you. First of all, I want you to see this. They are much stronger than you. Maybe they may be intel more intelligent than you. They may have more connections than you. But listen to this statement. Our father has spoken to say, we are going to take over. So ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we will fail to go in there is simply because our minds will make us feel like we are too small. That statement there, as I told you, we will take over. You are going to take over. When the prophet spoke that statement, there, means there needs to be something that you must take over. There must be something that you must conquer. There must be something. So if there must be something that you must conquer, it means there's already an existing king. It means there's already an existing business which is doing much better than you. It means there's somebody who is occupying your position at your workplace who is maybe much more intelligent than you, who maybe has more connections than you right at the workplace. But we will still take over. But we cannot take over unless we change and we move out of this grasshopper mentality or this grasshopper mindset. Stop looking down on yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You will take over. But it starts with your mindset. I told you God is powerless in a negative mindset. Some of you are students. And the Lord said, 
Ah, this year you do well, but last year you failed. The year before maybe you did very bad. The year before, actually the whole time in your school, you have been doing very bad. But the Lord said, you will pass. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Are you there in the conference room? I hope I'm relating to people. I really hope I'm relating. If I'm relating to you, wave your hand. If I am relating to you, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I said, if I'm relating to you, just raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes. Ha. Now, so I want you to see right there that we are talking about the grasshopper mentality. This is a mindset of where you think of what others can do to you and not what you can do to them. This is a min mindset where you think of what others can do to you. You're thinking about the punishment that your boss can do, yet if you take his position, you'll be above him. You are thinking about everything, what others can do to you more than what, what you can do to them. I know they look stronger, but have you thought about your strength? Have you thought about your strength? Ladies and gentlemen, unless we change our mindset, we cannot go or we cannot become what we want to become. It starts with the mind. It starts with the mind. It starts with our mind. Because so many times we have a memory that has really hindered us from moving forward. But today I'm here to tell you, you are about to come out of that in the name of Jesus. I said you are coming out of that in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Number two, number two, number two is the slavery mindset. The second mindset we have there is what we call the slavery mindset. Allow me just to go through these quickly and then we get into the work of today. The slavery mindset. I want you to understand here, when we are talking about the slavery mindset, we are talking about a mindset that only thinks of themselves as a slave. When the children of Israel were taken out of Egypt, they had seen God's mighty works who had taken them out of Egypt. Now they had become their own bosses. As they are going throughout the journey, whatever they wanted to eat, they were eating. Whatever, wherever they wanted to go, they were going. Whatever they wanted to do, they were doing. They were not bound by chains. But because their mindset kept, uh, was now bound by slavery mindset, they kept on thinking about going back to Egypt. This is what's happening with so many of you today. Because you have been in chains for a long time, all you are thinking about is, am I still on this chain? No, you are not. I've seen so many people, I've seen so many people, um, you know, they'll come to, to church and I'll pray for them. And the Lord will deliver them, you know, literally the Lord will deliver them. And then they, they, they will come to me immediately after church and they'll be like, oh God, please deliver me. But I'll be like, but the Lord just finished delivering you right, right now. The Lord just finished delivering you. Why? Because that chain has been on a person for a long time. For example, if you tie a dog to a chain for a long time, maybe 20 years, and that dog um, is restricted movement, maybe from here up until here, you must understand the time that you take off the chain of that dog, that dog will move from here up until here. It won't go more than that, simply because it has been programmed like that. That's what I was talking about earlier. That we have been trying to come out of some certain things, certain situations, certain challenges, certain problems. But we are failing to come out of them simply because history or our mental memory is not allowing us because of what history has done to us. That's why if you look in South Africa today, so many black people are hating white people simply because of what history has done to them. You look at your community right now. 
Everybody, if I'm telling you right now, you can go and do this research right now. Some of you are watching me and you're from maybe disadvantaged community or even an average community or even a rich community. Any community you're in, I want you to look at it like this. Go and look at all your neighbors. Go and find out the people who st uh, the, how they are in their families. You'll find the same problem that the mother or the father of that house is going through is what their grandfather went through. And what their father went through, the child will also go through that challenge simply because memory, not because of anything else. And until we can replace that memory, change that memory, we won't come out of there. You must understand it took a lot of years for them to move from Egypt to Canaan. And in that journey, you must understand that people died. The people who were slaves died. Now it was their children on that journey. But their children still thought of themselves as slaves, yet they were not slaves. It was their parents. Until we can change our mental capacity, until we can change our mindset, we will not change our destiny. We won't. I always tell you that a, a journey or a destiny is always traveled twice. You need to travel it in your mind and you also need to travel it uh, physically. But you cannot travel it physically first. You need to travel it mentally first. If your mind encounters disturbances, if your mind encounters hindrances, then most likely your body will encounter those things. I remember one time um, I was reading um, something on social media and someone said that um, there was a group of people who went to a party and when they went to um, this function, in the punch, um, usually when people have punch, they usually make it with alcohol. But on this one particular time, this person did not make it with alcohol. He just made it with juice. But everyone who drank the punch behaved as if they were drunk. Not because they were cons um, uh, consuming alcohol. It was simply because in their mindset, they have always, or in their mental memory, any punch that you drink is made out of alcohol. And now after or just before the party was about to end or after the function or the event was about to end, the host came out and said, the punch you were drinking there had no alcohol. And people became sober instantly. Why were they not becoming sober all this time? It's simply because their mental memory is what was holding them. So many of us are being held by things that our mental memory is not allowing us to come out. And today I'm speaking to your mindset right now in the name of Jesus. That every negative memory, let it remove you right now. Every chain, every padlock, every cage that is holding your memory or your, your mindset from moving out of that uh, situation. I command it to let you loose right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the conference room they are not receiving in the conference room, are you receiving? 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 Now, the third mindset we're going into is what we call the dog mindset. Say dog mindset. Say it with me again. Say dog mindset. Come on, say it with me again. Say dog mindset. Say dog mindset. Now this mindset, this is the mindset where you disqualify yourself. This is where you think of yourself undeserving. This way you think of yourself, you, you, you think everything. For example, if I tell you right now that within three years from now, you'll be living in an expensive house, driving an expensive car, your finances will be in a different place. In your health, you won't be having any sickness. You'll be completely healed. This person will belittle themselves. There's somebody who will belittle themselves. Who will be like, this is not for me. This is not for me. This is not for me. Why? Because you're thinking of yourself as a dog. You think that you're undeserving. You always disqualify yourself. For example, they may put out a post at your workplace. Or they may put out a tender out. And you'll be like, and they'll be, uh, okay, we're looking for such and such a person. We're looking for such and such. Uh, business and you'll be like no I don't deserve this you'll be like no I don't deserve this this is not for me 
But the question is, why do you think? It's because you have what? The dog mindset. This is a mindset that is hindering a lot of people. We are disqualifying ourselves from things that God has qualified us for. I told you that God is useless or powerless in a negative mindset. No matter how much we may try to say, no, I'm like this, I'm like that, I'm like this, I'm like that. Until we can change your mindset, we won't be able to get you to walk into your destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters, I want you to understand here that life is not what we may make it out to be like. Life is first lived in your mindset. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. If you can believe it, you can drive it. If you can believe it, you can live in it. If you can believe it, you will get married. If you can believe what I'm saying to you right now, by the end of this year, you financially, you'll be in a different place. You spiritually, you'll be in a different place. In everything, your health, you will be in a different place. All it takes is for you to believe. And where does belief happen? In the mindset. You say, I want you to see how important your mindset is. I want you to see how important your mindset is. Because every battle we fight is won on the inside of our mind. And until we can think of ourselves as champions, that's why every time, and uh, let me start now on this, how can I conquer the negative mindset? First of all, it starts with confession. The first way that you can neg uh, conquer a negative mindset, it starts with confessions. Daily confessions. Daily confessions. You look at Jesus, everywhere Jesus went, whether he was alone or he was with people, he kept on saying different things. He kept on saying, I am the bread of life. He kept on saying, I am the light of the world. He kept on saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those ladies and gentlemen were confessions. It is our daily confession that I am rich. Say it with me. Say, I am rich. Say, I am strong. I am great. I will make it. Come on, repeat it after me. Say, I am strong. I am great. I will make it. I will not be sick. Sickness is not my portion. In the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? You see, it takes daily confessions to overcome negative mindsets. Because the more we speak it, the more our mind believes it. But a closed mouth is a the destiny. The more you allow the devil to close your mouth, the more the devil will conquer your mind. That's why every time when you speak good things, all of a sudden there's a voice that speaks to you in your mind that says, ah, that's not true. Why didn't that voice come to you before you spoke? It's simply because that voice knows that you were defeated by the speaking of the word. Ah, Kali goes. Hey, the devil knows that you will defeat him in your mind the more you speak. Jesus, every time he moved, everywhere he was going, he was declaring, he was speaking. It is not called an ego. It is called a confession. It is called confidence in who our God says I am. Do not speak what the devil says you are. Speak what God says you are. That's what the Bible says, let the weak say, let the strong say, let the poor say. So meaning when you're in a moment of poverty, when you're in a moment of weakness, when you're in a moment of uh, um, whatever it may be, sickness, the Bible says you must speak. The Bible is not denying, God is not denying that you won't be sick. God is not denying that you won't be in, a, uh, in weakness. God is not denying that there won't be poverty. But he says in the midst of your poverty, in the midst of my trials and tribulations, I will speak the word of God. Oh, kala sote, li katarenigos. Hey, rivers of living waters. They shall flow from our bellies. We speak a word of edification. We speak a word of upliftment. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if we want to win in our mind, it first starts with speaking words. It first starts with our daily confession. When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you say? When you look in the mirror, what is the thing that you say? When you are driving in your car, what is the thing that you say? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Am I talking to people here? Am I talking to children of God here? What is the first thing we say? Because we cannot talk about um, other things, but we first need to talk about how do we conquer our mindset. And I told you, first of all, it starts with confession. It starts with confession. It starts with confession. It starts with your confession. What is the word that you are speaking? Because now, right now, as we are living, we are a result of what our words or our past words that we have spoken. And those past words that we have spoken are a result of, or our life is a result of our mindset. And our mindset is a result of the words we have spoken. Why is it whenever you say, I'm poor, nothing challenges you? Why is it whenever you say, I'm sick, there's no negative voice that says, no, 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 you're not. Why? Because in your mind, you have been conquered. But some of us, the moment we speak, I'm sick, God begins to say, no, my son, you are not. That word, it immediately goes back and we rewind and we say, the Lord says, I'm not sick. That's what the Lord says. Huh. Santo Radia. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you this. Change your daily confession. Change your daily confession. Second way to conquering the negative mind is reading positive things or staying in an environment of pos positivity. What does the Bible say? It says, what's this? <laughs> I love what the scripture says. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith. Where is faith? Belief. Belief is where? In your mind. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when I surround myself and I have a hearing of things of positivity, immediately that automatically allows my mouth to speak it because my mind has conceived it. When you allow yourself to be always around a positive environment, you are now allowing your mind to become positive than negative. That's why have you seen the time that you are reading a book that is very good for your life or very good for your business, all of a sudden you feel like sleeping. Uh, let's not even talk about the Bible here, but let's talk about books that are very influential for you. How is it that certain people, when they are at school, they are able to stay awake, but you all of a sudden, when you are reading your school book, you are always falling asleep. Why? Ask yourself. Because the devil knows that if you can acquire that knowledge, you are gone. I look at you right now. If you can allow yourself, ask yourself, listen, <laughs> ask yourself, ask yourself, right? Why is it whenever a good friend comes, all of a sudden there's something that fights that friend from coming to you? Ask yourself, why? It's not like you had a big fight, but why is it there's that negative um, mind or negative uh, thing that is fighting that friend from coming into your life? It's simply because... The devil knows if that friend can stay in your life, there are things that you guys can exchange that will change your destiny. Why is it the devil can allow you to watch TV, to watch cartoons, to watch movies, to watch these things, but the moment you start watching um, documentaries on success, the moment you watch preachings from a man of God, or whatever that will build you, Anything that builds you, all of a sudden you feel like sleepy. All of a sudden you can't even finish it. 30 minutes feels too long for you. 
because the devil knows that will change your life. So the second way into changing or conquering a negative mindset is surrounding yourself with a positive or a good environment. That's what the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter number one and verse number one. It says, let's actually go there. Psalms, as we are finishing right now, the book of Psalms, chapter number one and verse number one. All right. Are we there? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Allow me to read this in the Amplified Translation. Hmm. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor standeth in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scorners or ridiculers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yields its fruits in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. Huh, did you hear that? It says, blessed is a man who does not surround or who does not sit in the seat of the scornful, who does not gather in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is that man. And in the Amplified, it talks about being fortunate. It talks about being favored by God. Those things, that happen when you don't surround yourself with ungodly people. Now, I want to relate it with success. When you don't sit in the counsel of failures, of people who failed. It says, do not even take the advice. Then you, and it says, meditates on his word or on his law day and night. His teaching in the Amplified speaks about teachings and scriptures. And then now in verse 3 it says, you are like a tree firmly planted by the rivers. Now one thing, I understand when you're firmly planted by the rivers. A tree needs two things to grow, which is its source of food, sunlight and water. Unless it can have these two things, that tree will not grow. So I want you to see this. It says growth or the food you need for growth is determined by the surroundings that you have. The things that you need for growth is determined by the surrounding you have. Unless you change your surrounding, you cannot conquer that negative mindset. Now, I want us to pray right now. I want us to pray right now. And I want you to pray to God to erase every negative memory. Every memory that is holding you from moving into the place where God wants you to go. Every memory that is holding you from moving out of Egypt and going into Canaan, I want us to pray to God that God remove that negative memory. Any chain, any barricade, any cage that is holding me from moving out of my Egypt and walking into my Canaan. I may be out of my Egypt, but I'm not walking into my Canaan because of something. God, remove it. And I'm telling you, that thing is in your mindset. And that's what we are praying for right now. Begin to clap your hands and pray. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Li karamanto peredia ta le sote kiramanta li garadia suve 
e paranigo sonta li garamanta le juda e taradia tola meson te kiramanta li garadia tola eriga so ja e talamanta li garamande gila dosa merado si kalamante kira la manta li garadia suve e shata li garamanta li gadar diga so de gila manta li gadar bar diga so de e taliga la monde gizo oshka taladia tara me suve ata li garanigos le juda e taradia suja anta li garamanda li garanosa manda la bar diga so da kila manta la manda li garamando shata para diga dalla manta liga da manda la mando santa legata para dalla manda la mando sandiga la nosha e para dia so para diga do santa legata ma sonte liga la manda liga da doshe e taliga la no saniga la manta ligo de gia ta era kato kira niga sonda liga tar nigas Meso taliga radiga usaata taliga asuja ita la manta liga ranosa maso tekira la bardiga sote ita la manta liga radia suve ela pardiga sota ila manta liga ramando sekira taya dia sove ito kariga tala manta liga ramanda liga dardiga sodo kote gia ramanda gia areja ata liga Zonte kida aliga ramanta liga la pari ga soda ila manta ma sonto shanta liga radiata aliga soja anta liga ramanda liga ranezo eta liga adar diga sota eta parega asuja anta mande gariga la manto pre ila pardiga sote ila ta paronda gila manta man sonta liga ramanda liga ramando shanta la manda la dora ninga no shanta liga ramante liga le taliga radia sujeita ita la manta liga mando shanta la manda la manda mando shanta la radia sode ita la manta le radia su shanta liga ta tar niga ta masunda liga ramante liga ramando se ita liga ata liga tar manda liga dora dia to shanta liga ta le to Prana ligada masonte ti atare diga sonte in Jesus mighty name we pray in the name of Jesus we pray I want to tell you this ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters uncles and aunties mothers and fathers I want to tell you all this right now we are looking at moving into or becoming what God says we are but we cannot do that until we change our mindset you see everybody will tell you that if you want to change your way or how much you make or how you live your life they will tell you change your way of thinking it's that simple and i'm here to tell each and every single one of you it applies to everybody if we want to change where you are going in life we will need to change the way you think you want to change how much you earn you need to change how you think because that's why that thing that comes where people will say um you know whenever you tell people they will always tell you they'll be like think outside of the box think outside the box does not mean think outside the box it just means change the way you think because inside the box is the way you think outside the box is the way you don't think so it changes the way you think because the way you think is inside the box so we need to get you to change outside of the way you think because the way you think is what has been make, giving you how much you earn lately so i'm here to tell you each and every single one of you it starts with that let's change the way we think that's how we we'll change our destiny that's how we we'll change our fortunes and everything and i'm here to tell you after today i believe the lord has changed your mind there's been a renewal of your mindset that has just taken place right now if you're watching us on youtube you're in the conference room with us god bless you thank you so much for joining us and to all my partners i'll be meeting you again tomorrow 8 p.m. don't forget we're having our third session of what we have been talking about of coming or raising financial profits So make sure you join me again tomorrow or my partners. To everybody who is doing the giving right now,
whether you're giving your tithe, you're doing your offering, or you're giving your seed right now. Just take the account number that is moving on the screen right now. Take that account number right now. And you are saying, I'm giving this seed. I'm giving this seed because I know I need a renewal of my mind. I want you to take that account right now. Whether you're giving your tithe, you're giving your offering right now, take the account right now and say, this is my seed, this is my tithe, this is my offering for a renewal of my mind. I'm waging war against every negative mind and I'm winning. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to you? If you believe with me and you know that's for you, I want you to take that account number that's moving on your screen right now in the conference room, on YouTube, wherever you are. I want you to take that account number right now. Take it and you shall be blessed as you take that account number right now. Take that account number right now. Just take it and do your giving. And I bless everyone right now in the name of Jesus. I bless you as you do your giving. May the Lord multiply you. May the Lord increase you. May your mental capacity change. May the way you handle things, the way you do things, change in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you and I bless you. I speak an increase. I speak a multiplication right now upon your life. That your life will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you are doing your giving right now, I believe your mindset shall be renewed. I believe you shall have a transformation of your mindset. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, your mind shall begin to become creative. Your mind shall begin to become and bring more value into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you shall never be the same again. Your life your finances will never be the same again. After today, your health will never be the same again. Because of your giving, I speak a blessing over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. Say, I am blessed. If you believe with me, say, I am blessed. Come on, if you believe with me, say, I am blessed. If you believe with me, say, I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. Say it again with me. Say, I am blessed. Come on, say it with me again. Say, I am blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I believe your life will never be the same again till we meet again to my partners we're meeting tomorrow at 8 p.m and all stewards don't forget if you're in the tribe of Issachar you're in the tribe of Issachar you are in Val branch all Val branch tribe of Issachar I'm meeting you at exactly 12 p.m midday on Saturday for stewardship and all stewards we're meeting exactly at 4 p.m we are meeting together at 4 p.m on Saturday right in our church hall it'll be so amazing as we also connect to our father um, together and your life will never be the eggs on Sunday Sunday of financial profits raising financial profits we are meeting this Sunday if you want a special prayer to become a financial prophet meet me this Sunday right in Ferenaheim and your life will never be the same again I love each and every single one of you and I know that you I know you have all been blessed today and I know your life will never be the same again. If you believe it with me, raise up your right hand and say I am blessed. Till we meet again, my name is Langanani Matebula, son of Major Prophet Shepherd Bashiri. Till we meet again, next time m for our midweek service online and to the rest of you remain connected in order to collect your collection and shalom <laughs>